Hello, welcome to the next episode uh, where I'm going to be looking at things for my loft layout Tunbridge West Yard. In today's episode I thought I'd start looking at some of the wagons that I've produced and more specifically the wagon loads, how I went about producing those wagon loads. So you'll see over the next few clips, you know, just the basics of how I've produced those, those items and how potentially you could produce your own items at relatively low cost with quite simple tools. I do have to thank Paul Wade again for uh, the photographs he supplied, um, they've been obviously invaluable to allow me to copy those wagons into my own models. So I hope you enjoy them. So this small rake of wagons is made up of all Backland and Farish wagons. It's got an OCA, an OBA and an OAA. Um, essentially what the train is, um, is carrying new sleepers, concrete sleepers. Um, this would be used obviously to, to any track renewals. And each of the wagons carrying something slightly different. This one's just looking like plain line sleepers. And then these two are obviously where the tracks split apart. Um, to make the, the loads themselves, they're relatively quite simple. Um, they're, they're also removable. So essentially what I've got is a, a thin sheet of plastic out of the base. And then the, the sleepers themselves, I've just used micro strip using my Northwest Shortline Chopper again. Just measured out something that would be about the right size for sleepers. And then chopped them all up um, and done two, two stacks of them. Um, let me see if I can refocus in on this a little bit. Right. On the, I, I painted them all grey and then on the top I've just gone along with a tiny little thin brush and painted on some um, rust coloured sections where the uh, pan roll clips would go. The other two wagons are pretty much the same process. Uh, this one though, or they don't have um, plastic card bases. Essentially what I've done is two and a bit stacks of micro strip um, and then underneath cut a hole out or cut the, the parts shorter so that I could put a, a small piece of um, metal in there, a bit of old wagon weights uh, to give a bit more weight to it and then just stack them. Both of these, as I say, are pretty much the same, same design, micro strip underneath with a bit, small bit of weight. Painted grey, again the spacing on the rust pan roll clips um, is laid out in a fashion so that they would look like two sets of points being separated and then on the end with a uh, tiny pen, uh, paint pen, wrote what looks like numbers as if they've been written. Um, again it doesn't come out particularly clearly but you know it's engaged, you're not going to read them particularly clear either. Um, and obviously I attached the photo these idea come from. Um, again thanking Paul Wade for that photograph, it's you know made it quite a nice little wagon train to load up here. Okay, and then yeah they would just run within a rake of, of our wagons being used. Obviously you'd have some wagons that would be used for removing the sleepers which I'll show So this rake of wagons, you could either run it mixed in with this was as empties, or these would be empty and these would come back loaded with the removed sleepers. Um, the, the load process is exactly the same. So you've got the Farish OAA, OBA, OAA, um, and then an o -A ODA. That's a Pico model. Uh, and I said exactly the same process plastic card base and then micro strip which I just cut up into random lengths and then stacked them and tried to stack them so they look like random loads all individually um, and they're all loaded slightly different so that you know it looks like they've just all been dumped in the wagon um, ready to be removed and, and binned um, and then I painted them using Humboldt paints just a, a mix of different browns mixed on there um, the camera's not picking up particularly well that the fact they're all slightly different colours and shades. But you know, for me I think 
it's, again, it's another nice little wagon load, um, and it makes the wagons look a bit more interesting than just loaded up as or lo uh, running as empties. Um, so yeah, quite an interesting little train or mix of trains there. So hope you've enjoyed. Okay, so this wagon's part of a, a stores train. It's a Engage Society kit um, and loaded up with a couple of Pico um, plastic wheel sets in there. The kit was built as per normal, painted a various mix of browns and stuff and things like that. The small patch of olive paint on the side. Transfers a mix of rail tech, rail tech sorry, and um, Fox transfers and I've loaded it up with a couple as I say a couple of wheel sets so the first thing inside is I put some micro strip painted like a, a wood color and then the point the wheel sets have just had the pin points fold a little bit flat on the end so they're not quite so pointy and then the wheel sets painted like a rusty color just to, to represent a couple of wheel sets which are being moved from Tunbridge um, maybe for replacement or bought, bought two tonnages renewals but I think again it's another nice interesting little wagon rather than running something that's just empty so this is a rake of tote wagons um, these were 3D printed by Paul, Ch Paul Churchill and I've had these for quite a few years now I got, in, got these off of Paul before I even started to learn 3D printing myself um, essentially you've got a 3D printed body running on a, a Dapol chassis. The, the wagon loads is actually supposed to represent spoil um, and waste ballast, that sort of thing. Um, the load itself, what I did is I went out in the garden and found a load of mud, dried it out, bashed it up with a hammer, um, sieved it so that we've got fine, all the fine stuff, got rid of all the stones and pebbles and stuff out of it. And then um, I put it in the oven on a, a, an old baking tray. Got the wife's permission first to make sure that she wasn't going to be unhappy about that. Um, and I baked it dry for about an hour so that, that killed off all the bacteria that was within the mud. I then just loaded it into the wagon um, and then used the mix, the normal mix of PVA that you'd use for ballasting. Um, it's added you know, a reasonable amount of weight to the wagon because obviously the 3D printed bodies are quite light. Um, and I've got about, I'd say, about 15 of these, um, all done in exactly the same fashion. Um, so yeah, it's just, again, it's another idea of how to produce that that load that you can use. So this wagon's a, an OAA loaded with oil drums. Um, this, as you can see from the photo that I'll, I'll show in here, it's actually modelled off of a real real wagon. And the wagon itself has actually become a bit of a joke within the group of friends that we've got because it seems that everyone's um, made a model of this. Paul, Paul Wade obviously made a model for his Tunbridge West Yard originally and then over the last few years everyone's done one so um, we've all got a copy of it. Um, my, my version, uh, again nice and cheap and easy, pit plastic card bottom again and then I've just used round plastic card um, and stacked them or cut them, all up, or cut them all up on the micro um, the Northwest Shortline Chopper, and then just stacked them all up in, in rows of four, zigzagged them, um, and then painted them all like a, this dark blue colour, and then picked out some of the tops, orange and black, like the, the wagon itself. Again, it's just another interesting load to go, go within the wagon. So, this is a rake of um, seahorse. Uh, ZCA wagons. They're a um, 57 or Chivers kit, but now they're, they're sold under 579. Uh, the kit's built as, as per instructions, you know, everything that you need comes within the kit itself. Uh, as I say, followed the instructions, painted up, and transfers come from uh, a mix of Railtech and um, mm, I think Fox did the, uh, the, the other transfers for them. The load itself, these wagons again, the load is removable, same principle, plastic card base and then fresh ballast on top, glued on with uh, the usual mix of PVA. And again I've got another rake of about 10 of these, these wagons, um, look quite, 
quite good when running on the layout. Okay, with this wagon, this is a uh, Bream runner wagon. Um, it's a Pico, uh, sorry, not Pico, a Ferris chassis. Uh, the body has been removed and then replaced with wooden planking. The load itself, um, again, is micro strip and Code 40 rail. Um, it's used, the, the load is used to represent what they would use when uh, working at site and using heavy plant machinery, they'd use this as a crossing to, to obviously not damage the rails itself. So they'd cut the, the track out, put this in place and they could drive a plant across or load on load using this this section. Again it's you know an unusual load and it's something that caught my eye when I got interested in modelling engineers wagons. Nice and easy to produce, just plastic island piece of rail and took a probably couple of hours really to do that, painted it up, uh, various different, there's rust shades for the rail and then brown, dark, dark brown for the sleepers that's been dry brushed with various different shades of brown on top of that. Um, the wagon itself is just painted engineer's yellow, um, I still need to transfer it up but you know, it's a nice representation of a, a bream.